Hello and welcome back to my series on transformations, uh, the key to crystallography, computer graphics, and many other applications. Uh, this part, we're, we're going to go back over the transformations that we've been doing in parts one through four, primarily translations, reflections, and rotations, and uh, then composites or combinations of all of those. This time we're going to be using matrices. And due to the limits in YouTube, I'm having to actually break this, this part of it into four sequences as well. And we'll start with uh, translations and reflections in this presentation. So we started with uh, an object. Uh, we decided that we were going to do some translations and rotations in the previous videos. And this is the, what the original figure looked like. And when we got to a point and we summarized all of the tr transformations that we described using coordinate rules, um, the first one is translation up at the top there, where the uh, figure moves in uh, different vector directions within the coordinates plane. And that's just given by a, uh, an additional constant added to both the x and the y. And then the uh, rotation transformations, you can see various combinations of value of the, of the um, ordered pair becomes negative, or perhaps the two ordered pairs are swapped, things like that. Same with the reflections. Um, and we, did, we looked at all the coordinate rules for those in the previous presentations. In composite transformations, we looked at the order of operations, those transformations taken in a different order don't end up with the same answer, or they may not. Um, in the case of this first one, we did a rotation of 180 degrees, followed by a rotation or a reflection over the x-axis, followed by a translation of 8 and 9. That did not equal the uh, one on the right, which starts with the translation of 8 and 9, then the reflection over the x-axis, and the rotation of 180 degrees. So the operations are not commutative. They don't. You cannot uh, depend on them being the same in different orders. And uh, the transformation operations can be handled by matrix either multiplication or addition. Um, and the matrix multiplication is not commutative either. So we look at translations first. The translation was given by the coordinate rule such as this, where we were adding a constant value to uh, uh, the either the x or the y or both uh, that value could be positive or negative so in the example we've been following an arbitrary point um, 7 4 in all of these examples and for a translation of, of h in x of 8 and a, uh, a k of 9 in the y direction they're just added to those ordered pairs to get 15 and 13 from 7 and 4 in the matrix version of this is handled by vector addition so um, a new vector x prime and y prime is just uh, expressed as the sum of these vectors um, x y and uh, added the constant itself as a vector that's added on so that the combination becomes x plus h and y plus k in the column vector on the right hand side so in computer programming, um, you might have a situation where x is equal to x plus 8. That's not a math statement. That's a computer update statement where you've decided to adjust the x variable by adding 8 to it. Um, it's really just updating a, a memory being stored in the computer. So that's just an update statement. Obviously, it doesn't make sense mathematically. The other option is to define a new variable that you then pass the uh, mathematical operations to the new variable. And that's, you do that if you're wanting to keep track of both the old value and the new value. So again, looking at the math of our specific example, the vector 7, 4 has a constant value of 8 and 9 added to the x and y respectively. Uh, matrix addition can only happen if the matrices are the same size. So in this case, it's a two row, one column vector. So the transformation looks like this. The original point 7, 4 is on the pizza crust there. Uh, and it slides up to a point off and up to the right. And the reason that I picked the translation of 8 and 9, um, 8 in X and 9 in Y, is to move the, the uh, pizza corner at minus 8, minus 9, up to the origin. So when we perform the transformation on all the points, it looks like this. So now we look at the example of reflection transformations. And uh, these are the coordinate rules that we're going to look at. 
and this is going to be handled this time by matrix multiplication where the transformation is uh, equal to a matrix A times the vector X. Uh, each column of the matrix X is a column vector relative to the origin of a vector basis. So we're starting to think a little differently about coordinates, thinking of them more as a, a vector relative to an origin. In a vector basis, which describes reality, if you will, it describes how points in space are measured. So a point is considered a vector within a basis. Coordinates of such as x, y, z become columns of the x vector, comprising the components of column vectors, and they're the ones that are going to be transformed. Each column vector is the sum of its components in that is listed in its rows. And these components are the components of the basis vectors. So the row entries are linear multiples or scalars of the unit basis vectors comprising the components of the column vector. And the rows of each column vector in matrix X are scalars of those basis vectors. And the example of that is uh, the unit basis vectors 1, 0, 0, uh, 1, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1, basically unit directions in X, Y, and Z are the unit basis vectors for the 3D card Cartesian coordinate system. The new transformed coordinates are determined by the matrix multiplication where uh, X is the input vectors described in the old vector basis and TX are the resultant transform vectors. So X is considered to be mapped onto T of X. The transform vectors are determined by a new basis but are reported in the original basis coordinate system. And this transformation involves a matrix uh, multiplication by the matrix A, which is called the standard matrix of the transformation. And one method for determining the matrix A is to simply derive the functions that map the vector into its equivalent transform vector. And that's pretty straightforward enough in the reflection transformations. So we'll look at those first. The pre-image is the image that's going to be transformed, and the image uh, is the result, and they're going to be reported in the same coordinate system. The transformation rule relates the orthogonal distance to and from the reflection line mirror plane on opposite sides. So if you remember the reflection over the x-axis coordinate rule, the y is going over the x-axis to minus y and the x's are staying the same. So in the case of 7, 4, it goes to 7 minus 4. So here is the transformed pizza. Um, it was translated, I should say, from the origin, so that the corners at the origin. Um, the uh, arbitrary point 7, 4 is in the middle of the sausage now and we're going to reflect it over the um, x-axis according to the coordinate rule up above there and goes down to 7 minus 4. Now to do that we have to write a linear equation that is going to ch uh, change the coordinates um, from the existing to the new. And the scalars on those uh, multipliers are, are not the coordinates themselves. In, in, instead they're coefficients that are going to operate on the existing vector and map it into the other one. So um, the values of those coordinates, at least in terms of whole numbers, don't change. Um, just the sign and, and the multiplier 1. And we write the equation in terms of both x and y. And this is something that's really important to keep in mind. The new variable is going to be, uh, for any given single component in the new uh, transformed vector, uh, any one of the independent variables, in this case x, is actually a combination of the x and x and y from the old system. So every new uh, x becomes a function of the x and y, and every new y becomes a function of the x and y. In this case, the y isn't used in determining the x, nor is the x used in determining the y. But in some examples, including one of the reflections we look at, um, the Y will be involved in determining X. 
um, and and x will be used in determining y. And in other transformations, they might there might be combinations of x and y that are used to determine a single independent variable in the new basis. So if we look at that equation, uh, x prime uh, remains the same, just as one x. Uh, y prime is negated. It goes over the x-axis. It goes from a position plus y above the x-axis to an equivalent position below the x-axis. So that's y prime equals 0x minus y. So the x value stays the same. The y value is simply negated. So writing that rule as a matrix multiplication, the coefficients are put in a matrix, 1, 0, 0, minus 1. And if you remember the rules of matrix multiplication, the first row is multiplied by um, the x and y column of the second matrix, reporting the value in the first, uh, first position of the, of the resultant vector. The second row is then multiplied by that same column vector to determine the second position of the, of the resultant column vector. So in the case of our example, we have the operation matrix multiplication on 7 and 4. So it becomes the 1 times the 7 plus the 0 times the 4 in the first position, and the 0 times the 7 and the minus 1 times the 4 in the second position. So again, this is the summary of what the math looks like, comparing the coordinate rule, the equation for the transformation, and the matrix out in front, as well as the example for 7, 4. It looks like this. That's for the single point. If we do the reflection for all of the points over the x-axis, we get something that looks like that. For the reflection over the y-axis, we're going to keep the uh, y value the same, but now we're going to change the x value, and it's going to go d the distance x to the reflection line, the y-axis, and then the equivalent distance to the other side. So it's going to go from the positive x value to the negative x value. And transformation looks like, and there's the arbitrary point 7, 4. Its reflection over the y-axis according to the coordinate rule, goes to minus 7, 4. The equation for doing that, the x value involves x and the y value involves y, and there's no mixing in the use of y to determine x or the use of x to determine y. The x value is simply negated. So the coefficients pulled out of the equations and into the matrix, we have a matrix that's minus 1, 0, 0, 1. Looking at the arbitrary point, 7, 4, matrix multiplication is minus 1 times the 7 plus 0 times the 4, 0 times the minus 7 plus 4, 1 times the 4. So here's a summary of the equations and the matrix and the example. It looks like this, the pizza and the arbitrary point goes over the y-axis, and that's what we get when we, re we reflect the whole pizza. You can think of the y-axis just like the x-axis before when we did the reflection over the x-axis or the reflection over the y-axis. What you get on either, either side between the image and the pre-image is uh, like a mirror reflection. So now we look at the reflection over the line y equals x, and by the coordinate rule x, y, the coordinates are swapped, so in the arbitrary point from 7, 4 goes to 4, 7. And this looks like this. We have the arbitrary point sitting in the middle of the sausage, and it's going to go over that line y equals x. This time, the transformation that involves both x and y to determine x is 0 and x and 1 and y. So it uses the y value in the matrix multiplication and doesn't use the x value, and vice versa in determining y. It uses the x value but not the y value. So the matrix comes out as 0, 1, 1, 0. There's no minus sign involved because the signs of the variables do not change. 
summary of the math like so with the vector the equation pulled out into the matrix multiplied by the vector x and y. And the mathematics of that is that the zero for determining the x, the first row multiplies by the column 7, 4. And zero times 7 plus 1 times 4 it determines the first value in the transformed vector. In the second example, or the second component rather, uh, 1 times 7 plus 0 times 4. That sum is 7 plus 0, it becomes 7 for the y prime component. So if we do that for all of the pieces, there goes the arbitrary point, and there goes the rest of the pizza. And we'll continue uh, transformations in my next uh, part where I discuss rotation. In the rotation examples, you'll see that both x and y are involved in equations to determine the new x. Both x and y are determined in the equations to determine the new y. So join me for part 5, part b.